He said, Father, what I'm about to do, don't do it for me. Keep on waiting. But in your waiting, know that he can show up and show out quickly. God will answer prayer. He may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. Amen. Please remain standing. God bless you. I pray that you would turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and the 7th verse. As I have delved into this scripture before, I want to take this month and do what I call alternative preaching, uh, instructional preaching. And um, I pray that you all will stay with me. In 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 7th verse, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. He said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm made strong. For a few moments, I want to talk about I got stuck, but I stayed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, I got stuck, but I stayed. And you may be seated. Amen. There, there, there was a question that was raised last week that I negated to answer. And the question that was raised is why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? This is not a new question, but it's an old age question. It is a question that someone would raise when they are trying their best to live right and treat people right. And then go to the doctor and discover that there is a lump growing in their breast. It is the question that one would raise when they faithfully attend their worship, support their church, and support their mission, and give faithfully to the kingdom and then go to work and find out that they are on the cut list because of corporate downsizing. Why does bad things happen to good people? We had a member in this church who was faithful beyond measure. She was in the choir she supported 
any mission or vision that we had, worked in our finance room, there was no greater member than Sister Rosalind Howard. Adopted a child and raised him from birth only to one day hear on the news that the same child brutally took her life. And I had to get up here and help her family to understand why bad things happen to good people. And the conclusion of the matter is that in our finite understanding, we don't always know why bad things happen to good people. Because to answer the question of why is to answer the question of of you understanding the initial motive of Satan's foolishness to charge God in the first place. This goes back to Satan wanting to be like God. Had a nerve to charge him and challenge him. God had to show him who he was and kicked him out of heaven. And when Satan, these preachers would tell you, and was kicked out of heaven, he lost his position. But watch this, he didn't lose his power. And ever since then, he has been trying to get you to do and what happened to him, he wants to happen to you. He fell and he wants you to fall. Lord, help me. So to ask the question, why, is a question that you may not ever have answered. So a better question is, when bad things happen to good people? Can't not necessarily answer why, but I can tell you what you need to do when. Know that, did you? Woo. Lord have mercy. This preacher is taking Paul and just messing him all up. Some thought he was wrestling with his identity. Some thought that Paul had um, malaria. A sickness. Some thought that he had an optical condition, something wrong with his eyes. They concluded that when the scholars looked at how the book of Galatians ended in large writing and they said, well, Paul must have had been blind because look at how large the letters are. So, so he must have had something wrong with his eyes. We don't know what was wrong with Paul. But he had a thorn in his flesh. But my issue ain't Paul's thorn. Because I got my own thorn. Lord help me. And, and, and your issue ought not be my thorn. Because you got your own thorn. I wish I had some help in here. I don't know if it's your sexual identity. I don't know if it's your condition, your sickness. I don't know if it's what you did 20 years ago, what you did 10 years ago, or just last night. The reality of the matter is everybody in this room got something they're dealing with. That's why you ought not be looking at your neighbor. 
sucking on your lips and sucking on your tooth, looking at them wondering what they dealing with today. You ought to be glad that the Lord just kept you alive and got you in church on a rainy Sunday morning and you ought to come in here with your hands lifted up saying I was glad when they said unto me because I got some stuff going on and sticking me on the inside. I got my own thumb. I got my own stuff. I wanted to call somebody out last week. And I meant it. I wanted to call somebody out last week. But God reminded me I was a preacher. <laughs> At the right time. I got my own stuff. This is why I don't, I don't see how people can stay in other people's business and, and, and texting stuff about what other people are doing and how they living and what they got going. Man, if you take care of your own stuff, if you look at your own life, if you mind your own stuff, how you keeping up with what everybody else doing? Got my own stuff. Got my own thorn. He's sticking me. He's sticking me. I ain't the best preacher, but I can get a word out. And the Lord knew exactly what he was doing when he didn't let me know how to play the organ. Boy, if I could play the organ like Carlos and Dr. Brown, y'all wouldn't even be able to speak to me. So he let Walt Terry get that gift in our family. He let her get that gift because y'all wouldn't even be able to speak to me. I would have had the big head for real. Preach, pray, and play. So now I have to sit over here and say, dog, Lord, why didn't you give me that gift? Keep stabbing me. Why bad things happen to good people? It reminds us that he's still working on us. And so I can't tell you why. I can tell you what you need to do. And I'm done in 10 minutes. Paul said I had this thing stabbing me. Couldn't sleep at night. All day long I was preaching and it was still stabbing me. I was winning souls to Christ. And people were coming by the droves and it was stabbing me. Had to preach with it. Paul said, I pray. God, take this thing from me. Take the taste out of my mouth. Take the urge out of my flesh. Help me to delete that number out my cell phone. I pray three times. And God would not answer the way I wanted him to. And there are times when God will say no to your prayers. And the maturity of your faith is to know how to receive when he says no. Because too many of y'all looking for yeses. Anybody can praise him when he says yes. Oh my God. Oh. Anybody can worship him when he says yes. Anybody can thank him when he says yes. But my question is, will you still lift up your hands in the sanctuary when he says no? Oh 
my God. I prayed for God to bring my mama home one more time, but he said no. But his no didn't stop me from saying yes, Lord. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, his no ought not stop you from saying yes, Lord. I'm almost done. Paul says he wouldn't remove it. So all he said was, Paul, don't worry about the thorn. Sometimes, Jacob, you just got to keep pushing with a limp in your hip. Sometimes, Elijah, you got to keep preaching even while you're dealing with depression. Oh, my God. Sometimes, Jeremiah, you got to keep crying loud even with tears in your eyes. Lord, have mercy. Paul, I'm not going to remove your thorn because my grace is sufficient. I want y'all to know that when bad things happen to good people, I want y'all to know you might be good and you might be going through some stuff, but his grace, it is sufficient. Help me, Holy Ghost. It'll give you everything you need. I want y'all to know that I thank God for his grace. Yes, Lord. And somebody said that his grace, it picked me up this morning. And it turned me around. And it planted my feet on solid ground. Anybody in here thank God for his grace? Do I have a witness in here? I want y'all to know that that's why I often quote what Augustine had to say. I love Augustine's definition of grace. I think it's the more descriptive idea of what grace is. Augustine said that grace is no more, help me Holy Ghost, uh -huh, than snow covering manure. Lord have mercy. I want y'all to know that when you look at that image of grace, you see snow covering manure. And don't you know that when you see snow covering manure, there are two things about that image. The first thing is that you can't see the manure. And that's what grace is. Do I have a witness in here? Because there are some thorns in your flesh. Do I have a witness in here? that God has covered. And you ought to be glad because if some people had seen your thorn, they would have dismissed you a long time ago. But I'm so glad that grace covered me. Uh-huh, and sustained me. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that I got grace that covers me. Do I have a witness in here? And I don't look like everything I've been through. And I don't look like everything I'm in. And I don't look like what I just came out of. Do I have a witness in here? Don't you know that grace is like snow that covers manure? And the other thing about grace that covers snow is that you can't see it and you can't smell it. Do I have a witness in here? It's like the three Hebrew boys. They went in the fire. And don't you know, uh, the Bible says that when they were in the fire, a uh hot -huh, smoke all around them, destruction all around them. And don't you know the fourth man showed up in the fire and don't you know church somebody said it looks like the son of God I got news for you it doesn't matter 
what trouble you're in, what you're going through, what you got to face. I know somebody that will show up in the midst of your fire, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your storm, in your situation. And when they came out, the Bible says that their hair was still in place. Their clothes were not burned and they didn't even smell like smoke. Do me a favor, tap your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been through some stuff, but I'm so glad that my hair is still in place. Yeah, my clothes, yeah, did not burn. And I'm so glad I don't even smell like what I've been through. Do I have a witness in here? Don't you know? I'm so glad that Paul says, my grace is sufficient for me. Somebody said, it's not amazing grace, but it is amazing grace. Yeah. I like that. Amazing grace. It's just like amazing grace. Why you call it amazing grace? Because every now and then with thorns in my flesh, his grace let me squeeze through some stuff that I'm not supposed to squeeze through. I hope I'm not preaching to myself, but do I have about 50 people who squeeze through some stuff you weren't supposed to squeeze through? You squeeze through a job promotion. You squeeze through a job layoff. You squeeze, yeah, through a sickness that you were supposed to die from. Then you squeeze through that. His amazing grace is his amazing grace. Say it, say it. I thank God for his grace. It woke me up early this morning. It started me on my way. Yeah, yeah. When I wanna fall, it picks me up. When I wanna walk, it makes me run yeah thank god for his grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was a loss but now i'm found was blind but now i see too many dangers, toils, and snares. Ah, 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 ah. I have already come towards grace that brought me safe this far. Towards grace shall lead me on. Ain't that all right? Ain't that all right? If you got grace, you ought to dance. You ought to shout. You ought to leap. You ought to jump. You ought to praise him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got grace. I got stuck, but I stayed. I should have left. I should have quit, but I stayed. His grace helped me to stay. I didn't quit. I didn't run. I didn't give up. Yeah. Because I read somewhere where it said, They that wait upon the Lord, I stay. Because I read where it said, They shall renew their strength, they shall mount up 
with wings as eagles. They shall run. I stayed because I heard they shall walk and not faint. I did run, but I stayed because I read somewhere where it said, though a camp shall come against you, a thousand shall fall at thy side, 10,000 at thy right hand. I stayed because I read somewhere where it said, reaping may endure for a night, but joy, I said joy, I said joy, 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 joy shall come in the morning, yeah, 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 I stay, I stay with God, I stay with Jesus, I stay with the Holy Ghost, yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Help yourself. Help yourself. Doors of the church are open. We invite you to make a contribution to the ministry. Through your giving, we reach our community and expand his kingdom. And we recognize the one who gave us everything. To give, you can use technology. Use the Push app or go to Giving page on the Union Baptist website. Use the Cash app. Dollar sign, UBC. 1200 trade. Use the GiveLify app. Union Baptist Church, Winston-Salem. Let us show love through giving.